This is a comparison of medial and lateral pontine syndromes. We have a table here where medial pontine syndrome is one column and lateral pontine syndrome is another. Let's go through it. First is the cause. Medial pontine syndrome is typically caused by uh, paramedian branches of the basilar artery having a stroke. So we have a recreation of the circle of Willis here from Wikipedia. And we see the large artery in the middle and we can see small paramedian branches of the basilar artery shown here. So an occlusion here, ischemia, or an embolus here might cause a medial pontine syndrome. On the other hand, the lateral pontine syndrome comes from the dorsolateral branches of the AICA, which is the anterior inferior cerebellar artery shown here. So this would be damaging to the lateral pons. This would be damaging to the medial pons. Motor involvement, the medial pontine syndrome has contralateral hemiparesis. It affects the corticospinal tract, whereas the lateral pontine syndrome has no direct corticospinal tract involvement. Sensory deficits, medial pontine syndrome can have contralateral loss of fine touch, vibration, and proprioception. This is from the medial lemniscus. And the lateral pontine syndrome can have contralateral loss of pain and temperature from the spinothalamic tract. They affect different cranial nerves. The medial pontine syndrome can affect cranial nerve six or the abduction's nerve, and you can have an ipsilateral lateral rectus palsy, whereas lateral pontine syndrome can affect cranial nerves five, seven, and eight. So you can have an ipsilateral facial paralysis, vertigo, and hearing loss. No sympathetic involvement in medial pontine syndrome, but in lateral pontine syndrome, you can have an ipsilateral Horner syndrome, and no cerebellar symptoms in medial pontine syndrome, but in lateral pontine syndrome, you can have an ipsilateral limb ataxia.